Hey everyone and welcome back to Cruising with Matthew. In this video I'm going to cover all the dining options you can look forward to on Virgin Voyager's Brazilian Lady, so I really hope you enjoy this video. I was lucky enough to sail on Virgin Voyager's Brazilian Lady for a seven night media trip in June 2023, but I had no idea what to expect on board a Virgin Voyager ship in terms of food. Therefore, I thought I'd put together a video showing you our experience on board Resilient Lady to give you an idea as to what you can expect on board. Now, do note that unless stated otherwise, all these options are included within your cruise fare. For this video, we're going to split the food options into casual eateries and main restaurants. Casual eateries include places you can quickly grab a bite to eat and tend to be available throughout the day, whereas the main restaurants offer a more formal sit-down meal, opening mainly for dinner, with a few offering brunch options as well. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and explore the casual eateries on board Resilient Lady. The first and arguably the most well known is the galley and is Virgin's alternative to the traditional buffet found on other cruise lines. Situated at the aft of deck 15, this offers a number of food stores for you to choose from. For the vast majority of these, you can simply scan a QR code to view the menu and order from one of the roaming servers and the food is delivered straight to you. The food was always well presented and tasted so good. The fact it was served to you made the whole experience a bit more special in comparison to your standard buffet. In terms of food styles to choose from, the galley has the following choices which are served straight to your table, each with a fantastically punny name as well. This includes Hot Off The Press, which serves paninis and a range of toasties at both breakfast and lunch. Noodle Around, offering, you guessed it, noodles. This was probably my favourite food station in the galley as I loved trying all the different noodle and ramen bowls, with my favourite being the Thai green curry ramen. Let's taco about it, giving you the chance to try tacos and burritos throughout the day. In particular, I'd recommend the breakfast burritos as it was something a little different compared to your standard breakfast fare. Diner and Dash, a 24-7 breakfast option, meaning you'll never miss breakfast on this ship, and was a personal favourite of Yeans. The Burger Bar, which at breakfast offers items such as pancakes and French toast, as well as a range of tasty burgers throughout the rest of the day. They also offer veggie and vegan burgers, which Yean particularly enjoyed. Now there are a few food stores in which you can grab your own food and this includes the Daily Mix which at breakfast offers a variety of cereals, bagels and associated toppings, whilst throughout the rest of the day you can create your own salads as well as enjoy the soup of the day. Popstar, which gives you a selection of ice lollies to choose from, which given how warm it was during our cruise, these were very popular indeed. There's also Bento Baby, which serves a variety of sushi in bento boxes with accompaniments such as ginger and wasabi. I always got one of these bento boxes when I was having lunch in the galley, as sushi isn't something I normally get chance to try when I'm at home. Nearby, there's the sweet side, which offers a huge range of patisserie and baking options that change throughout the day and the cruise itself. This is a true must visit, but a word of warning, all the food looks so good here that you'll want to try it all. Now, if you're in a rush and you want something on the go, then head over to Quickies. Here, you can pick up a number of pre-box snacks which change throughout the day, so you'll never run the risk of going hungry, even if you're short on time. Drinks-wise, there is a fully stocked bar in the galley, but there are also inclusive drinks to choose from, this includes Tap That Cold, which offers a great selection of refillable drinks, including Sprite, Coca-Cola, Fanta, and ginger beer. In a similar fashion, Tap That Hot offers a range of teas to choose from or drip coffee, which is basically filter coffee to us Brits. 
Now, if you're lounging by the pool and the galley is just too far a walk away from your sun lounger, then head up to the Sun Club Cafe on deck 16, near the forward section of the ship. This casual eatery gives you the chance to try a range of Hawaiian poke balls, which is something I've never had the chance to try before, so I really enjoyed this. You can also enjoy bao buns with a number of fillings too if you fancy something lighter. Overall, I was super impressed with the Sun Club, as I felt like it offered something a little different compared to the food that was offered in the galley, and gave me the chance to try something new. Now the next casual eatery to look out for is the Dock and Dock House on Deck 7. Coupled with the stunning wake views out to sea and a relaxed Mediterranean decor throughout, this is one of my favourite places to relax on a sea day. What makes it even better is the fact you can enjoy a selection of food from their roving meze cart. Although these are on the smaller side, they're packed full of flavour and are a great way of having something tasty to eat if you're peckish between your larger meals or if you'd prefer something light at lunch. A personal highlight has to be the hanger steak, which was cooked to perfection. Although you are allowed to order multiple options, so I definitely recommend doing that as well. Nearby on Deck 7, there's also the Social Club, which is resilient ladies' homage to the fairground and everything fun. This includes a plethora of board games to play with fellow sailors, and there's even a retro arcade at the back of the venue. In keeping with this fairground theme, there is also a range of fairground style food and drink options for you to enjoy whilst you're gaming. These include pretzels as well as hot dogs, with vegan options available too, which is a great touch. You can also enjoy a range of floats and milkshakes, which are extra charged, but they did look rather tasty. Although sadly, we were always way too full to try any of these on our cruise. Another great feature was the sweets counter. A personal favourite was the peanut butter brittle, which tasted so good and was a wonderful accompaniment to our game of exploding kittens after dinner one evening. Next up, if we move into Resilient Ladies Atrium, which is known as the Roundabout, you'll encounter the final two casual eateries on board. The first is the Pizza Place, which as you can guess, serves pizzas. This offers a range of both classic styles, such as margarita or pepperoni, to more adventurous offerings such as chicken pesto or white truffle and egg. The pizzas are made to order and were probably the best tasting pizzas I've ever had on a cruise ship. Virgin is also the only cruise line where Yeon has been able to have a dairy-free pizza with dairy-free cheese on top of it. So well done to Virgin for this and definitely made my boyfriend very happy. Getting one of these pizzas at the end of an evening became part of our routine, as we like to take it back to our cabin, enjoying the tasty pizza whilst listening to the waves from our sea terrace balcony. It doesn't get much better than that, does it? Now, if you're in the mood for something sweet rather than savoury, I'd recommend seeking out the nearby Lick Me Till Ice Cream, which wins the award for the best named venue on board. Serving a multitude of ice cream flavours, this is the perfect place to go if you fancy something chilled after a busy day of exploring. This was really popular during our cruise, and rightly so, as they all tasted so good, and they also did some interesting flavours too, so make sure you keep an eye out for those. Now next up, we're going to cover the main restaurants on board Resilient Lady, with the first being Gunbei, which is situated on deck 15. This is a Korean barbecue restaurant. Unlike other cruise line restaurants I've come across, you're seated with other sailors, with each table holding at least six sailors in total. Unless you're a large party, this will mean that you're likely going to be seated with people that you haven't met before. Now, I'd be lying if I said I felt a little nervous when we were taken to our table because I wasn't sure if we would get on with the people that we were seated with, However, we got to know two other couples who were from Utah and California respectively, and we had a great time as we got on really well. The meal starts with your server playing a Korean drinking game, with the forfeit being a complimentary shot of soju, which is essentially a rice vodka. This acted as a great icebreaker, although I was utterly useless at it. 
Yeyan, on the other hand, did really well and actually won it. Food-wise, you start off with a number of veggie side dishes known as banchan. These consisted of some fantastically seasoned kimchi, spinach, eggplant and soybeans. And a top tip is to order one of Gunbei's signature cocktails. I chose the K-pop disco water cocktail because who doesn't want a drink in the shape of a disco ball? For our starter, you have the chance to select an array of small plates, noodles and stews. We were advised by our server that it's best to mix and match, so I'm pretty sure that the table collectively ordered the whole menu. Now I chose the seafood corn dog and the Dak Gang Jeong crispy chicken. Both tasted absolutely amazing. You're then treated to the main barbecue event, which is carried out right in front of you by your server serving us a feast of seafood, including items such as squid, octopus and shrimp, as well as my favourite part of the whole meal, the marinated beef short rib. These were served with a variety of dips and all tasted so fresh. So although quite different to the other main meals in other virgin restaurants, this was really good. Dessert is quite a simple affair being a soft serve ice cream, but to be honest I didn't mind all that much as I was very full by this point. We had the chance to choose either a mango or matcha flavoured ice cream along with a variety of toppings. Although not a flavour mix I'd usually consider, the matcha and mango flavours worked really well together and it was a lovely refreshing way to end the meal. Now leaving Gumbay and jumping down to deck 6, we encounter the next main restaurant, which is The Wake, Resilient Ladies Steak and Seafood Restaurant. This is one of the most popular dining venues on Resilient Lady, so I'd strongly recommend booking in advance so you don't miss out on your chance to dine here. It's also important to note that in addition to dinner, you can also enjoy brunch at The Wake. Now me and Yeyan really enjoyed having our breakfast here, it's definitely something to look out for if you're wanting to try something different in comparison to the galley for breakfast. The brunch menu is extensive and during our cruise we pretty much worked through the entire menu. My favourite starters included the poached shrimp which were packed full of flavour as well as the wedge salad which had the perfect amount of salad to fillings ratio in my mind i.e. a token lettuce leaf with a ton of filling which did make me chuckle. The main course never failed to disappoint, with the steak and eggs being my go-to, and judging by all the other diners around us, it was a firm favourite with other sailors too. If you fancy something sweet, however, then the French toast is a great option, as it tasted great and was super fluffy inside too. Now, on the first day, I made the mistake of thinking that you had to order a Benedict's option as well as a main. This being said, the Wake Eggs Benedict tasted so good, so if you're not fancying any of the main menu items, then this would be a great alternative. The impressive food just kept coming with the desserts featuring some unique options, including the crepe cake, which was surprisingly light and quite refreshing to eat. The apple tartin is also a great alternative and is packed full of flavour. In terms of dinner options at The Wake, if you're a fan of steak like I am, or seafood like Yeon is, then you're going to have the best time. As soon as you are seated and as you're exploring the menu, you get the chance to enjoy this tasty brioche bread with some of the best garlic butter I've had in a long time. For my starter, I chose the Hamachi Crudo, which is yellowtail fish, and a sushi type I haven't tasted before. For your main, you can select either a main dish or something from the grill. In my case, I chose the hanger steak from the grill option. Now, I'd recommend choosing a number of sides as unlike the main course options, you will only get the meat in your grill option. I opted for the creamed spinach, green asparagus and French fries, which all tasted incredible, although the hanger steak was a true highlight of the meal. Now, although there are a number of tempting desserts to choose from, I chose the appropriately named The Wake, which was pure decadence and a chocolate lover's dream, and I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Now, the next main restaurant to look forward to on deck six is Extra Virgin. This is Virgin's Ode to All Things Italy, and you definitely have an Italian feast to look forward to. 
For my starter, I chose these braised mini meatballs, and although this sounds quite simple, it was packed full of flavour and tasted so good, especially that rich tomato sauce. Another great touch was that after your starter, you get to enjoy a range of Italian cold cuts and cheeses in the form of a sharing platter. Next up is the first of your main courses, and I was really impressed with the dishes on offer. What I really appreciated was the fact that they didn't fall into the trap of offering standard and sometimes overused Italian dishes, instead offering something quite different. Although I was torn with what to have, I eventually went for the porcini rubbed strip steak, which was cooked to perfection and was incredibly tender. You also get a pasta course to enjoy too. After much deliberation, I decided to go for the oxtail agnolotti, which, although tasting really good, was marred by the fact that it was served at the same time as my main course. As a result, by the time I got to eating it, it had cooled down a fair bit and wasn't nearly as enjoyable to eat as it should have been. Now, this may be simply due to the fact that the waiters were rushing our food for us, but it's definitely something to check when you're ordering if you don't want to pick and choose from both main courses at the same time. Additionally, as we were running late, we sadly had to miss dessert. So I can't comment on these choices, but judging by what I saw from the other tables around us, I'm sure they taste great. Now, you may be wondering why we were running late. This was simply due to the fact that they struggled to accommodate Yeyan's dairy intolerance. Now, for context, on every other cruise that we've been on, you have the opportunity, if you have an intolerance like dairy, to order your meals the day before, in order to allow the dishes to be amended to be made dairy-free. As we'd sailed on p &O, Princess, Fred Olsen, and MSC at this point, we assumed that Virgin would have a similar approach. Turns out we were quite wrong. At every restaurant on Resilient Lady, they seemed unable to do this, although to be honest, for every casual eatery and main restaurant that we ate at, there was always a selection of things that Yeyan could choose from that just happened to be dairy-free, or they could quickly make dairy-free. The exception for this was extra virgin. Despite being told the day before that they would easily be able to accommodate his intolerance on the day, Yet, as we sat down for dinner, they seemed really inflexible about the dishes that the head waiter the day before said would be fine. As a result, we had about an hour's delay whilst they remade stuff to be dairy-free, and the wait meant that we had to miss dessert in order to not miss a show and the rest of the evening's events. Now, I get this isn't the end of the world, and it didn't ruin our cruise or anything like that, instead it just put a slight dampener on the beginning of one of our evenings. However, I just found it a massive shame and a bit frustrating, as I felt this could all be avoided by pre-ordering the meals the day before, like we've done on every other cruise line. Now, I don't pretend to know the ins and outs of mass catering, but if every other cruise line can pre-order meals for people with intolerances, why can't Virgin? I'm all for Virgin doing things differently, but this is one thing I wish they'd kept in line with other cruise lines, and was probably the only significant issue I found with our experience on board Resilient Lady. Rant aside, our waiters were super apologetic, and they did their best to speed up service, so I really appreciated that. It was also the only venue where we encountered this issue, so maybe it was just bad luck with Extra Virgin, but I just feel that pre-ordering the day before would help stop any issues, and I was so surprised that a line that prides itself in food like Virgin did not do this. On a more positive note, however, let's move next door on deck 6 to the test kitchen. As the name suggests, this takes an experimental approach to cooking and offers some of the most unique dishes I've ever eaten on a ship or on land. As a scientist, I loved the lab-themed decor and felt like it was a refreshing take on restaurant design. The staff here were also super friendly and did a great job at explaining how everything worked, which was much appreciated as at first I wasn't really sure what was happening with this meal. For instance, instead of a typical menu which describes all the components of a particular dish, Test Kitchen simply lists the main ingredient, so each dish feels like a complete surprise. 
First up is the mushroom course, which is a mushroom mousse slash pate with the side of some thinly sliced crostini bread and tasted incredible. Even though I'm not the biggest fan of mushroom, the flavour was perfectly balanced and was so tasty. Following on is the egg course, which is served under a glass cloche filled with smoke to add a bit of theatre and also to add a smoky flavour to your dish. This course consists of an egg yolk surrounded by garden peas and topped with caviar. You also have some freshly baked bread. Although this seems simple, it was a really tasty and quirky dish. Afterwards, you're served the scallop dish, which consisted of a perfectly cooked scallop served with Sorrento ham and a ham broth, which is poured on shortly after serving. This was packed full of flavour despite its dainty appearance and was probably one of my favourite dishes in this restaurant. Next up, you get the choice of either beef or venison and I chose the latter. The venison was served with a gravy and cooked to perfection so I couldn't recommend this choice enough, although Yeyan did say that he really enjoyed his beef. There's also a side of laminated potatoes sprinkled with a bicarbonate of soda based crumble, which sounds like it really shouldn't work, yet it really did and was super tasty. Next up was the blue cheese course. I have to admit, I was a little dubious about this one, but it tasted incredible and wasn't nearly as overpowering as I imagined it would be. The cubes of pear and walnut pieces also helped to contrast the textures offered by this blue cheese sorbet thing, so I'd really recommend giving it a go. Our final course, chocolate, certainly didn't disappoint and consisted of a chocolate ganache and sponge decorated with strawberry caviar, almond crumble and a type of marshmallow fluff on top. It somehow managed to be both rich and not sickly to eat and was a perfect way to end this unique meal. Test Kitchen shaped up to be my favourite restaurant on board because of its sheer uniqueness, yet for all its quirks, the food was so tasty and well presented. I was just a little sad that I didn't get chance to try the second menu in Test Kitchen, which is offered in the latter half of a seven night cruise. Therefore, I'll just have to sail on a virgin ship again. You know, for research purposes, of course. Now, if we move down to deck five, we encounter our penultimate main dining venue, Pink Agave, which is Virgin's elevated Mexican restaurant. I'll admit, I don't know all that much about Mexican cuisine, so I was interested to see what was on offer here, and it certainly didn't disappoint. Initially, you have the chance to choose from a selection of small and medium dishes, although we were recommended by our server to just choose everything, and that's what we did. Although I have to admit the two person tables are definitely not designed for that many plates, so a bit of strategic stacking may be required. Do note that the food that I'm showing you has been adapted to be dairy free, as me and Yeyan are sharing the same food here. Now personal highlights for me include the tuna aguachile and the camarón amarillo, which featured the best tasting shrimp I've had in a long time. As for our main meal, I couldn't help but have steak once again, and I found it to be cooked perfectly and tasted great. I would have liked some side dish, even a salad or something like that to complement the steak, but given the amount of food I just had for our starters, I can't say I missed it all that much. To finish off our meal, we had the opportunity to try a varied selection of desserts. I just had to choose the chocolate tacos as they looked so fun. Whilst the dulce de leche filling was very rich, it tasted incredible and ensured that we finished this meal on a high. Our final main restaurant on Resilient Lady is Razzle Dazzle and is probably the most iconic venue on a Virgin Voyager ship. Inspired by the dazzle paint scheme applied to ships in World War I, this offers a vegetarian slash vegan approach to food, although you can enjoy some meat options on offer here too. Now for brunch, like at the wake, I feel like most people didn't realise you could enjoy brunch here, and it was a great alternative to breakfast in the galley, if you wanted to shake things up a bit. 
Here you can enjoy a three course brunch which definitely helps set you up for the day, although we could rarely manage all three courses. Starters for brunch include a number of vegetarian and vegan options such as a nutty gazpacho and vegan watermelon and cream which were both a unique but refreshing way to start our meal. Do make sure you take up the offer of a pastry to enjoy too, as they are absolutely gorgeous, with the apple cruffin, a blend of both croissant and muffin, being a personal highlight. There's a plethora of mains to choose from, with the vast majority being vegetarian, although you can choose from a selection of naughty dishes which contain meat such as the salmon bowl or the uniquely coloured fried chicken sandwich. Both of these tasted really good, although I'd recommend trying some of the veggie options too, such as the sunny side hash which featured eggs, kimchi and root vegetables, which tasted really good. Now, if you're feeling hungry after those courses, then you've got some interesting desserts to look forward to. Although all of them looked fabulous, I just had to try the rainbow churros, and I was not disappointed. Now, I did feel like a six-year-old eating it, but it was so fun to have, and wins the award for the quirkiest dessert I've ever had on a cruise ship. Dinner was equally as impressive, offering a range of both veggie and animal-based choices for every meal. The menu also told you the style in which the food was cooked in, which gave you an idea as to what you can expect when ordering. For my starter, I chose the yellowfin tartare, which was one of my first forays into raw dishes, besides things like sushi, so that was really fun to try. This being said, my favourite part of this meal was my main course of slow-cooked lamb shank, which was incredibly tender. The dessert options looked just as tempting, and I decided to go for the rum and apple cake, which was certainly arranged in a unique way, and helped to make it a fabulous end to our first dinner on board. Now, all those casual and main restaurant dining options are included within your fare, and as you can tell by the length of this video, there are a lot of them. However, Virgin offer just two extra charge dining options on Resilient Lady, with the first being afternoon tea at SIP, which is Resilient Lady's Champagne Lounge. This costs either $19 for just your standard afternoon tea, or if you want to make it extra special, then you can pay $39 for a glass of champagne with your afternoon tea. This was probably the quirkiest afternoon tea I've had on a cruise ship, and overall I've really enjoyed all the food here. It felt quite different to the afternoon tea offerings I've had on other lines, so it felt quite fresh and unique. I'd have enjoyed some more substantial sandwiches, but that's just my preference. The cakes were all absolutely divine, my biggest issue with the afternoon tea didn't have anything to do with the food, but more to do with the atmosphere and the venue it was held in. Normally, extra charge afternoon teas have some sort of musician playing. This helps create an atmosphere and makes the whole thing feel a little bit more special. Yet, when we had our afternoon tea here, there was nothing of the sort, and as a result, the atmosphere felt a little flat. Likewise, as SIP is built essentially into a long corridor, it still acted as a thoroughfare whilst we were eating, so I feel like you could have chosen some alternative spot, like on the rocks, and this would have just felt a bit more intimate. The final dining option on Resilient Lady is incorporated into the performance of Another Rose. This is Virgin's answer to a supper club and is held in the manor, costing $50 per person. As you are seated, you're presented with a set menu to choose from, with our first meal being a sweet potato chat. This was packed full of flavour and tasted incredible, despite being not something that I would usually eat. Now, throughout this entire evening, you get to enjoy plenty of free-flowing rosé, although non-alcoholic is on offer here too. You also get several additional drinks which fit into the performance. The first up was called a love potion and this was based on gin and Cointreau and certainly packed a punch. Later on in the performance you get a tuna bomb which is served in these baskets of semolina puree. For your main course you are given the chance to choose between sea bass or short rib. Now my short rib was impeccable and worked perfectly with the spices which it had been braised in, yet it didn't feel too spicy, so I would really recommend this course. 
finishing off the meal, you enjoy a rose petal cheesecake, which works perfectly into the show. Although it may look quite dainty, believe me, after all the fabulous dishes you have eaten, this will be the perfect amount and really helps finish the evening on a high note. Overall, I was massively impressed with the food on offer in Another Rose, as it tasted really good and was presented in a really creative way that fit in well with the performance. Now, as this is a dinner and show, there is a crossover with the entertainment. However, I'll cover that in detail in a separate YouTube video talking all things entertainment on board Resilient Lady. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. But spoiler alert, I thought the singing and choreography was just out of this world. So there you have it, my ultimate tour of every dining option on board Resilient Lady, and I really hope you enjoyed it. As I'm sure you can tell by the length of this video, there are a huge range of dining options to choose from, and although they occasionally struggle to deal with Yeon's dairy intolerance, we were absolutely blown away with the food on board Resilient Lady. We really enjoyed the fact that the vast majority of these options were included within your fare, which meant that I was able to try stuff that I wouldn't normally try on land if it was at an extra cost. The food was also at a consistently high standard throughout, and was probably the best food on any cruise ship I've been on, which is high praise indeed. So if you're going on Resilient Lady soon, make sure you give everything a go if you can, because it is some of the best food you will ever have at sea, and you certainly won't go hungry. A massive thank you to Virgin Voyages for gifting me this press trip, and thanks to all of you for watching this video. I have many more videos on Resilient Lady planned, so make sure that you like and subscribe, as it's always appreciated, and you can be kept up to date. If you want to know more about Cruising with Matthew, then take a look at my other social media channels, the links are in the description below. I hope that you're all doing well at the moment, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. So until next time, this is Cruising with Matthew, and thank you so much for watching.